Dream Storms, hotter seasons. With a specialized degree in climate, he's pioneering the way we look at climate and how it affects our weather. Now, climate specialist Jeff Berardelli. In today's climate classroom, you may have heard of Thwaites Glacier in Antarctica, also known as the Doomsday Glacier. It's huge, the size of Florida, with enough ice to raise sea levels at least two feet. It's been in the news a lot lately, and that's because global warming is making it unstable. And just last week, a University of South Florida scientist published a groundbreaking study raising more alarm. You can look around the world at, at, at Antarctica, but also Greenland, uh, Iceland, you know, mountain glaciers in, in Europe. We're seeing things going in the wrong direction. It mountain. may seem ironic that from this tropical shoreline in downtown St. Pete, Dr. Alistair Graham studies a glacier 7,000 miles away in the coldest place on Earth, Antarctica. But there's a good reason for that. The chances right now look like Thwaites is going to impact and rewrite some of the coastline shape for our state. Thwaites is arguably the most vulnerable and concerning glacier on Earth because of its potential to raise sea levels and swamp low-lying areas like Florida. Now Graham's new study is escalating concerns of a more rapid retreat. So what our study has done, why it's I think important, is that we looked at the past history of Thwaites, what's been going on in the last kind of couple of hundred years. To do that, Graham's team had to examine the ocean bottom where the glacier used to rest, a technological feat that's only become possible in the past few years. To look backwards in time, the team used sonar from an autonomous submarine to map the nooks and crannies of the seafloor, 1,000 feet below. And these are ridges that essentially catch the ice shelf so it retreats more slowly. Is That's that right. right. Anything that kind of pops up and is, and is higher up tends to be a place where ice can at least hold on. But lately, as the glacier thins, it's getting harder for the ice to hold on. Graham's marine map reveals a recent history of not-so-glacial movement. The historical footprint of Thwaites suggests that something even more dramatic happened not that long ago. Graham found that for a short period within the last 200 years, Thwaites receded twice as fast as it is now, revealing that rapid retreat is not only possible, but probable in the near future. We're seeing that maybe in the next five, ten years, it's, it's highly likely that Thwaites will lose contact with that seabed ridge. Thwaites Glacier is anchored to the bedrock on what's called the grounding line, where it's pinned to a ridge. That ridge acts as a barrier slowing the flow of ice sliding into the ocean, but its grip is fragile. Recently, warm water currents have been undercutting Thwaites' floating ice shelf, destabilizing the underbelly. The fear is, with continued warming, the glacier's retreat from the grounding line will accelerate with more of that once grounded ice floating into the ocean, raising sea level. So Thwaites right now is losing about 50 billion tons of ice per year. That's a it's net loss. And the, the concern for the future is that's going to increase. To put that into perspective, this animation shows what 1 billion tons of melted water looks like. Now multiply that by 50. That's how much water Thwaites is adding to our ocean each year. And that's only one glacier. Still, Graham emphasizes that there's no need to panic. In geological terms, rapid retreat or even collapse is not an overnight process. You know, we talk about the Doomsday Glacier, um, which I don't think is particularly useful because it suggests that you've got this annihilation. And I think that's, that's a, a mistake. What it's got the potential to do is to become a Doomsday Glacier, but it's a very slow process. And I think over the next uh, 20, 30 years, we might see a lot of change at Thwaites and in increases in sea level rise from Thwaites that will affect, start affecting our coastlines, particularly here in Florida, where everything's very low lying. So here's the takeaway. Sea levels will rise and coasts will be flooded. There's no getting around that because it's already baked in due to the excess heat we've already added to the ocean. But it's not too late to slow the pace to make sure there's time for us to adapt. For more Climate Classroom, visit WFLA.com. Jeff Berardelli, 8 on your side.